Hello everyone, and this is Tamil, and I wanted to go over for Clip Studio Paint tips on how to improve your composition and concept art. And as you can see, I have my article open, which you can check out in the link in the description, and I will do my best to simplify the things that are often talked about when it comes to composition because there's so many so many uh, little aspects and things and um, just want you to know that none of these are formulas they're more like guidance and suggestions that you should be sticking to but never be afraid to break them and experiment because that's where it actually comes from and what that's where you improve on is through experimentation and uh, let's go over some simple things so that you can have a basic idea of what the composition could be like and what things that are uh, could be used in it. So golden ratio is one of the major ones that everybody talks about uh, and uh, I created this little table which is basically going to show you that A plus B divided by A equals A divided by B. So very complicated, it looks kind of weird. But if you drop it down into numbers, it makes it way easier. So this is golden ratio uh, completed, but also it has that spiral, which I have not included yet. You can start with a very small square, which should be basically like one by one, for example. And then you can create a square that is two by two and combine them together, which the second one is going to be on the top. And then after that, you can basically uh, plus sign the previous two numbers together to get the third one. So as you can see, one plus two is three. Two plus three is five. And three plus five is eight. Five plus eight is 13, etc. So each time you want to just create a rectangle every time you add it. And you can just combine the previous two numbers to get that number. The main thing is that it doesn't have to be just the number. It is the, the point is that it's a ratio. Uh, it's a mathematical thing where um, you can see this golden uh, ratio be used in uh, product placement and like some commercials and stuff and uh, actually real things in the real world. Uh, reason being is because a lot of things in real life actually follow that. Flowers follow that ears shape. Uh, little like clamps of shells in the ocean. Uh, the gravity of Earth actually also follows uh, the golden ratio. So in nature, it is um, a lot of that combination and the ratios are there. So just keep that in mind. It, that's where it came from. And uh, for example, a violin was actually demonstrated, like basically designed by using the formula of the golden ratio so that it's more appealing in very so this is very complicated obviously i made it just like uh so it looks better but overall uh this top part up to here where the actual violin starts and into combination with the ratio of this entire brown thing that's would be the golden ratio as you can see this a1 a2 so really you don't have to think about it too much so i made a quick paint over of my old painting so this is more practical uh, i added the golden ratio on my old painting which didn't have it so on the top is the one that didn't have it and you can see that the golden ratio spiral focuses right there uh, somewhere to the left of the main rock it doesn't look symmetrical and it doesn't have the emphasis on it, so it looks kind of wonky, right? So I decided, how about I add the golden ratio and try to paint on top of it. As you can see, it actually stretched out a bit, so that's why I was explaining it before that it doesn't really matter what the actual number is, it's the ratio compared to each other. So if you stretch and pull, uh, it will not be distorted it will still be the golden ratio just keep in mind that you can't like warp it perspectively because you just want to keep the way it is uh, you can make one on your own as i was saying just add squares one by one two by two three by three 
or you can find one online. This picture on the second one, I painted some of the things away and I actually added some things on the left side so that it's more curved and there's like more things uh, to the rock but it still follows the Fibonacci number so you can see that the ocean comes this way I actually cropped the image as well so now you can see the whoosh right here at the bottom a little bit I would still fix the water but this is a general fix that I made and it looks a little bit better compositionally wise it looks more organized and it has a little bit more flow compared to the previous one where it's very static and it kind of just square is like boring looking rock so that is uh, the thing is that you are the artist and you are the one who's going to come up with the idea of the painting so if you want static you want to use symmetry or less uh, Fibonacci numbers and golden ratios and all that try to use like static shapes but if you want to make something more dynamic this is the way to go you want to try to implement the golden ratio but keep in mind that you don't want to uh, fix your art to fit it you want to make it you want to fit you want to thumbnail your art and then try to fit it later so I make like 10 thumbnails of black and white and then I pick two and I'm like okay I like this one and maybe try to implement it don't just try um, completely change your painting to fit that if it works and you try to changing it it doesn't work then just don't uh, try to implement those things. So eye guidance is another thing uh, which could be useful for your painting and I simplified it very much. I just used the very basic silhouette of a person to show you how can you use uh, the basic rules to uh, guide your audience. You want to choose a place where your viewer will look at. In this example you can see four same figures. Which one are you looking into? I'm not sure, I don't know. But in the second one, I actually used color. Another way to emphasize a thing is to use more saturation, maybe more color, a different hue also works. If your entire painting is, for example, blue, it's night time, and you have a boat in the ocean, right? And you make it red, it will stand out and it will work beautifully. Or another way, to guide your viewer is to have a balanced image. I'll talk about balance a little bit later, but this is also working for balance. If you have three things that are kind of important, you want to make sure they're different sizes and they're not the same. So you can see that three bodies are a little bit different. I changed them a tiny bit, but in the next one, you can actually see way more difference. So there's big, medium, and small. And if you keep your image and your artwork to keep that rule that you have middle ground, foreground and background, same thing. If you have big, medium and small shapes, it helps to kind of simplify it and just have your viewer to have some rest because if everything is the same size, everything is the same situation, everything is the same color, it will make it harder for the viewer to see where he's supposed to look at. The next one is lighting. I did not make it too complex, but as you can see in the first image, I added light to the left character, to the second character, and I actually made two of the last ones to have the same light so that you can, you can basically say, oh, okay, so I see two of them are in the blue light and then the other two are also separate. So it's kind of creating a symmetry in a way. And the next one, I just added one light to only one person and the added shadows and behind. Same goes right here. You can use light in order to guide your viewer. Another uh, great way to do that is basically if you have a simple landscape painting and you have a building or a castle in the background and you really want to emphasize that castle, make everything in the shadow as if it's cloudy and then you have that one little sun peeking through the cloud hitting that castle and having that contrast light onto it so this is the same exact way just very simplified so you can basically implement it in your own painting another way to implement uh, this gu eye guidance thing is basically use 
focus. Um, a lot of cameras, they have blurred effect. Uh, it's called bouquet and uh, it depends on the camera lens and all those technical things. But if you use any camera, you probably notice that the things that are very, very close to the camera and if it's trying to focus somewhere far, it will blur out the whatever is in the foreground. It looks um, kind of interesting and it helps you to basically focus on the foreground or the opposite. So it depends where you focus on. But in general, things that are closer, very close to the camera, it can be blurred and it doesn't have enough details. And the things that are in the back, for example, that castle again, you want it to be as sharp as possible. So the same principle applies. You can just blur out the image uh, where it's not needed just a little bit. Don't add too many details and uh, try to make it sharper in where you want your viewer to look at. Another simple way is using tones, which is very similar to color. But if you use uh, my previous tutorial that I made, if you create a layer, set it to color, and you basically fill it with black, it will turn your image into black and white. And that will help you to see where your values are. So if you're painting in black and white or painting in color, you can see your values. And using value is very important. This is also connected to light. If you have darker things, for example, in the middle where it's important, it will stand out or the opposite is also true. So if you have, for example, a very, very dark scene with uh, little light, but the person or the character is in the main emphasis on your painting will wear white or very bright color, it will make them stand out in the painting. So the same rule applies just the opposite way things that are very contrasty they will stand out it's the same goes for landscape paintings if you have uh, sky and middle ground and foreground the foreground usually is the darkest middle ground is a little bit lighter and the sky and the far 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 away is usually the lightest so the same thing goes for the atmospheric perspective if you take a picture uh, somewhere in the mountains, you can see that the further it goes, the lighter it gets. Same thing, it helps with contrast, you can use that in your painting as well. Another quick way, if you're doing a lot of characters at the same time, I just uh, simply made this super cute, uh, <laughs> quick illustration. If you have characters, it's very useful to um, take for consideration the eyes and the hands those are the main things the viewer will look at it's just human nature the first you go silhouette then the face then the hands and this is how it goes and you can use hands and eyes to guide your viewer so as you can see the first character looks down this second character looks to the left which is off the canvas shouldn't be like that when you look at this character, it's actually pointing to that one. And this one is also pointing off the canvas. This is not a focused image. I don't know where to look. I'm just going either way on the composition. But if you have a lot of characters, this is very helpful. You can have, have eyes and hands, pointing fingers and all of those things to help you guide your viewer. So for example, if on the top left, this is the main character, they can just all look at the same character and uh, hand gesture toward that character. That will help a lot. So keep in mind that, for example, different countries read um, images in different ways. So for example, if it's on the West, most of the time you, you read from left to right. But if it's somewhere maybe in India or some other country, then they read from right to left. So keep that in mind as well. And you can use, again, hands, amazing uh, to point at things, eyes are amazing to point at things, and where your face is pointing. So for example, if you do a three-quarter view of a portrait, it also helps to see where the person is looking at. Uh, guiding lines are literally lines that will help you to uh, guide your viewer where to look at. And this is very painting, a uh, very easy painting that I made a long time ago. And as you can see that the road helps you to go to the house, the 
fence also helps you to look towards the road you can see that this line right here it goes into the house if you look at the mountains they all go down and they basically point toward the house my main point is like look at the house and i just made a few things that will look toward the house and make it um, basically easy to recognize where i'm supposed to look at so you can use different techniques for that but this is the way i did it rule of thirds is another easy way to help you decide on where to put the emphasis of the image basically you divide your image into thirds and it depends on the image so as you can see on a square it's all equal on a very um, not square and rectangular shape it will stretch and it will keep the same uh, rule of third if you want to make your painting better it's not a law so you don't have to do it every time but it's very easy to use you want to make emphasis on the red dots where the intersection comes together you can also use this line or this line for emphasis so for example my horizon line could be here or my sky could start right here so it really depends on what you're going for there are a lot of different ways to use it you can also do diagonal so if you have a line from here all the way to here you can use that as your main kind of angled it depends what you're painting basically like let's say it's a mountain right if you do this mountain right here and then it goes here and then here and then here and this whole thing is just a mountain and the main character is in the middle it will feel a little bit um, symmetrical but it will feel still balanced so this is a quick painting I did as well um, basically you can see that um, I placed this kind of like shrine and like a little architectural part of the image right where the intersection for rule of thirds is and it feels still great it doesn't feel unbalanced it doesn't feel like it's all the way here because it has enough negative space right here and has some breathing room and this whole thing is kind of empty but there's also trees and there's also light coming um, down toward that uh, architectural thing so it really depends on what you're going for but this is just a very easy simple way that I used the rule of thirds balance is probably one of the most important things that you should be thinking about and it's uh, simply put if you have a heavy object that is big on the right side of the canvas you can't leave it alone you want to add something to the left so that way it will help to balance out the image and I feel like these images help to understand it in a very basic level. So if you have very symmetrical and the same way, it looks balanced. Like if you make this in real life, the top left, very, very balanced. It looks real, but it doesn't look dynamic. So if you go on the left uh, bottom one, you can see that it's almost the same thing, but it's way more dynamic. It's also balanced, it's still balanced because there's one heavy thing on the here and there's a lot more small ones on the left. So uh, this one is also very simplified. You can, it's almost the same thing I would say, right? But in the middle, we switched this one to here and now it feels way more balanced even though there's three of them and one at the bottom and one at the right it's almost the same thing but it feels way more balanced and this is the same way you can use in your painting by using light by using values by using blur effect it's all the techniques are here just keep that in mind as you thumbnailing or creating your artwork so i hope you learned something this is very very basic and easy kind of guidance and easy uh, lesson for this it, there's a lot more to it but one of the main things I can recommend you is actually do abstract paintings so let's say you have square and circle and triangle and make paintings that are abstract they're very uh, useful to practice uh, composition because there's nothing that you should be worrying about except uh, how the shapes look together and uh, triangle helps you to point to things the uh, simple circle is usually a thing that attracts the most 
the eye and the square is very balanced and the same kind of um, too balanced actually it's the same on each side so it will feel like it's calming the image too much so you want to balance it out and have a lot of triangles and maybe one square and two circles that are different sizes so i really highly did recommend doing that for your practice and that's what i did for some of my paintings uh, back in the university and i highly recommend you do it as well uh, let me know if you have any questions and i hope you learned something today and happy painting